Hey guys and welcome to Slash Rex Games. Yes, I'm back with networking and in this part we're going to be cleaning up a little bit of our project because while going through this in preparation for part 8 I did notice that there were some things that we could improve upon that would make our later tutorials a lot more understandable. So this is going to be HTTP DLL to part 7.5 cleaning up. <laughs> and as always I've got my server on the left and the client on the right. So the sort of things that we're going to be doing in this tutorial, we're going to be going through some of our variables, naming them and giving them more descriptive names. I'm also going to be going to the server and we're going to draw little pixels for bullets because at a later stage we want to see some action going on other than just players bobbing around on the server side. So that's going to be done too. I'm also going to let each object draw itself on the server side instead of having the controller do all of that stuff. And to go along with the server side little bullet pixel, it's also going to have all the characteristics that it's going to be sending through. So it's not just going to be this messenger, it's always it's also going to have some sort of object that it's going to move around. So let's start off on the client. We're going to go into object bullet over here and I want to go into the create event and just remove speed entirely. I want to change these variables from owner and name to owner's ID. Set this to zero. Change this to owner's name. Very, very much more so as you can see it's more descriptive. So we get owner's ID and owner's name. And obviously we need to go into this draw and make sure we are updating these. That was ID. That was owner's name. Right. Then I'm gonna go into object local player, global left button, into the code, go expand this down here, update these names, owner's ID. Owner's name. Then another thing, I've taken speed out of bullets because I think at a later stage we're going to be wanting to create all kinds of projectiles and they're going to have different kinds of speeds depending on upgrades and whatnot. So I think it's better if we give the bullet a speed when we create it so that it depends on what we are and not what that bullet is. So bullet ID dot speed equals 5 and we can change that at any point in time and that'll go to the server and it'll just send that speed all around <sighs> then we're also going to have to send that through to the server so that's our age buffer write un16 should be fine global buffer bullet id dot speed so that's going to be value of 5. Notice I'm not putting 5 here again, because if we change that value of 5, then I'm going to have to change it in two places. So I'd rather just change it here, and then it can be read over here as well. All right, so that's for now what we're going to change on the client side. We're going to head over to the server now, going to our object controller. Now, here in draw, notice this controller is drawing everything. It's going to be drawing every single player, and if we wanted to add the bullets, it's going to be drawing every single one. I'm going to move away from this god object of the controller drawing everything and instead I want the object player every instance of object player is going to draw itself like this and then I'm also going to create a bullet object and every bullet object is going to draw itself it's going to be they're going to be very much independent of what they're drawing and it's going to kind of reduce the load from um, some objects so I'm going to cut all this code out and delete that event okay I'm going to create a new object called object bullet. No sprite. I'm going to have a create event over here and we're going to initialize some variables. All to zero where necessary. There we go. So we've got the X, the Y, the owner's ID, the bullet speed, and the owner's name. Then I'm also going to create a random color, which is going to be a make color red, green, blue. So we have a range between 0 and 255, so it's going to be an I random 255, and we're just going to be doing that three times. That's going to give us a completely random color. It's going to look pretty fantastic. And random. So there we've got that over there. Going to say OK to that. Then we're going to have a step event. Oops, not a begin step. Change this. 
just a normal step and our direction is going to be our image angle our speed is going to be bullet speed and then here I'm going to make sure that the bullet destroys itself if it travels to you know further than a specific distance because we don't want these objects cluttering up our server if they are not destroyed on collision with something so distance to point is going to be what we're going for we've got our x start our y start very useful variables they are stored as soon as this object is created, that's going to be the x dot and the y dot, so you can use it to determine, in this case, distance away from where it was created. And we're going to say, is that greater than 500? That's in pixels. If so, destroy! There we go. Okay, very cool. Now we're also going to add a draw event. Okay, so this is what we had earlier, and we don't need this is going to be draw set color random color. We don't need this line, not that. There we go. Do this indentation. Okay, so far so good. This is going to be changed to X and Y. We can just get rid of that. We don't want these. There we go, this is going to be one pixel. Doesn't need that, or that. And get rid oops, let's get rid of this comment. And we actually don't need any of these because we're not doing a font. So there, we're drawing something in a random color. In this case, it's going to be a circle. Add our X and Y coordinates, and it's going to be one little pixel. And it's going to have an outline, which doesn't really matter because it's one pixel. So we can say OK to that, click OK. Then while we got uh, while we've got drawing on the mind, let's go to play and do the same there. Paste this in. Okay, we can keep that. We can keep all of this. We just need to get rid of this line and this line, and then worry about an it, our indentation. Mm, there we go. This can stay as is. And there you go. That's done. Okay, cool. So that gets all the drawing out of the way. So our object controller now doesn't have to worry about that. Um, let's go actually go back to the object bullet and grab this random color. Let's put it in here at the bottom. There it is. Very good. Then remember, in our client, we were sending the bullet speed. So we're going to have to go into the step of it over here. Find 6. Uh, create a temporary variable for that. Bullet speed. And in our bullet object, we were setting our bullet speed in the step event to that of this bullet speed variable. So we need to make sure that we suck it out from the client properly. So bullet speed equals h buffer read, I think it was a uint 16. Uh, typos, this keyboard is terrible. There we go. And we obviously need to write that back to all the other clients as if we are a messenger but then also over here I'm going to create a bullet instance This is just so whoever's watching the server can see what's going on. It's not too boring. It doesn't just see circles bobbing about. You can actually see who's shooting it to who. There's an object bullet that we created earlier. Oops. Now let's give it its variables. Bullet dot image. Oh wait, no. Actually, these are all set in there. So bullet dot bullet angle. Let's just go back into here. We have a bullet angle. So let's do it here. Okay. Equals bullet angle. Uh, before we forget, actually, let's go into bullet and set its image angle. 
equal to bullet angle. We should probably set that before direction. Like that. Very good, very good. Back to this. Uh, bullet angles, bullet angle. Fine, fine. Bullet dot. Okay, we've got the X and Y set up. Angle. Bullet dot ID. Uh, let's keep this open actually so we can see exactly what we want. We do want ID. Equals bullet ID. I think it was called the owner's ID. That's what it is. Okay. So then it's bullet dot owner's name. Equals bullet name. So we've got angle, we've got oh, speed. Bullet dot bullet speed. Now if you want to you can just go straight ahead and say bullet dot speed equals bullet speed and stuff uh, such and such and then not worrying about these intermediary variables, it doesn't really matter. This is just gonna give us a little bit more control. Maybe later on we want to change these on the fly or something, or we want to do something else with them instead of just saying them immediately. So bullet dot bullet speed, that's okay. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, we've all oh, good. Over there. Awesome. Okay, so that is all been updated with better names there on the server. We're going to switch back to the client over here. One last thing in our object controller, in our step, we need to make sure that we're receiving that speed now. Right over here. In case 6 but its speed. It was after name. Make sure you do get these in the right order. And then over here, we must also update these. So this was owner's ID, and this was owner's name, and then I dot. I'm going to change this to bullet. I is a little bit stupid as a name. Seriously, do not go for one letter names that don't really make sense. So in this case, bullet. Bullet owner's name equals bullet name bullet dot speed and see what case in what way did we set the speed of this? We don't have a speed here, do we? Uh, let's just say uh, just for now it doesn't really matter. Okay, okay, back to here. Cool. Very good. It is all set up with the angle, the ID, the name, the bullet speed. Let's get him from there. Save that. Okay. Go into our bullet, make sure what has it got? It's got direction. Uh, it's got owner's ID, owner's name, bullet speed, and then in our step we got direction equals image angle, speed and bullet speed. Where are we setting the image angle? Let's just go back into our controller and make sure all is well. Oh, I'm just setting it straight there. Let's actually change this to bullet angle. Go here, back to here, get rid of that, bullet angle, Zero. Go here. Image angle equals bullet angle. Very good. Okay, cool. We're all set up to actually go ahead and test this. So save, save. I'm gonna bring up another client. Oh, one quick thing that we mustn't forget to change is when we created this bullet over here. This. Good. That is all fine. Cool. Alright, so we should start up nicely without any problems. So let's go and jump right into testing. Okay, so here's our server. Oops, it has disappeared again. 
Uh, I've got so many windows open. There's my server. And we're going to connect two players. There's a player. Let's see what happens when he shoots. Okay, so we need to make sure that that bullet is going someplace on the server. Oh, obviously I know exactly why that is. Back to our client in here. Let's stop this. To local player. It is over here. I forgot to change these. There and over there. Okay, all done. Okay, okay. Okay, so here's our server. Let's see if we can grab one of these clients. Right over here. It's one of our clients. And there we go, when we're shooting, it is making a whole lot of different colors. And we've got our bullets going, so that's quite fun. We can actually see what's going on there. And this is behaving as it did before, which is great. So if we get our second guy to join, hopefully nothing has changed. There we go, Bob has entered the arena. Uh, let's put him over here. Let's see if he can see my bullets. He can! Cool! Alright guys, everything is working as intended as it did before. Oops, that was my mistake. There we go, we're shooting. Our server is picking up where that's going, it's creating the bullets correctly. And our remote players and everything, our other clients can't see the bullets. So at this point in time, we're in a much better position than we were at the end of part 7. Our variables have proper names, and things are running as... things are running quite well. So thanks for watching part 7.5. We are in a much better state than we were before. And up next is going to be part 8, where we're actually going to be adding some hit detection. It's going to be quite fun. I've pretty much got everything planned, which is great. And because of what we did just now, it means I don't have to do all of that in that part. So it'll just be doing hit detection. It'll make it a lot easier for us to understand how things are working there. So I think from this point on, I'm going to be raising my standard of coding. So that's how variable names are as descriptive as possible, not being too long. And it's going to make the learning experience a lot better for you guys. So I hope you did enjoy this video. Sorry for the somewhat delay, especially in this tutorial series, but uh, I'll be back bringing you some of the great tutorials as I did in the past. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part 8. We'll be doing hit detection. If you like this tutorial as well as many of my other tutorials, please feel free to check out my Patreon campaign. Your contributions do help me in all kinds of ways, and I do appreciate your support very much. Thank you. Feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. And I can help you out, or someone else from the community can help you out. If you have any suggestions, you can also put them in the comments, or you can send me a PM. Um, you can also send me a message on Facebook. I like to reply to you guys on Facebook. It's pretty cool. So that also, check that out, that link, like Facebook. You can also follow my ramblings on Twitter sometimes, especially when I'm going to release a tutorial I like to tell you guys on there, so you can prepare. The project files are in the description, so you can, uh, you can download them, fiddle around, add things, and each one will be building on the last one. So 7.5 built on 7, so there's nothing that's changed since then, apart from what I've showed you today. So until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you guys then.